Immorality includes all sexual activity outside of the covenant of marriage between one man and one woman. The Holy Spirit is preparing the church to operate in great power. But here's the thing. The Holy Spirit requires that we live a lifestyle of obedience. We must live in obedience to move in greater power. I'm tipping you off on what keeps your spirit dull. Who wants to have a glorious Savior in relationship but a dull spirit and you can't feel the power of it? What a, what a tragic way to live. Though many believers live that way for decades, immorality will defile you. Whether spirit. a little bit or a lot, it dulls your spirit. I do your... not want to live with a defiled spirit. I want to live with the joy of a vibrant spirit. I love feeling God's presence. I want to empower you to not feel good about compromise and position yourself to start feeling God more. Immorality grants legal doors of access to Satan to oppress you. And when we walk in darkness, we open the door and invite him in. He says, thank you. I couldn't get in until you opened the door. We dabble with immorality. Our heart gets cold. Our mind gets darker. Our conscience feels defiled and demons have more access to trouble us. Don't dabble with this. It really does affect you. Beloved, God's raising up a generation of young people that are so connected to Jesus Christ and the grace of God that they know it's their destiny to live with a vibrant spirit, to live faithful to Him. Because we're in a generation that immorality is exploding, and the only confidence I have is an army of young people who love Jesus, who find out the truth of these four aspects of His majesty, these four eternal rewards. They assimilate them in their lives and they preach them boldly to everyone they know. Let's look at the four descriptions. He who has the sharp two-edged sword, Jesus meant himself, he goes, tell them I have a sword. Tell them I will fight against them with my sword. Because he loves us, he intervenes with zeal. Number two, verse 18. Tell them I am the Son of God. He's the Son of God. What he's saying, I am superior in every way to immorality. If you sin, my love is superior. I'll forgive you. If you're in bondage, my power is superior. I can free you. Oh, I had left the pleasure. My rewards are superior to the rewards of immorality. You'll see. It will be far more satisfying. Number three, tell them I have eyes like fire. Tell them I have burning desire in my heart for them. That when I confront them, it's only because I love them. When they know how I feel about them with my burning desire, it will give them courage to run to me and to see who they are to me. They're not worthless. They're not helpless. They're not filled with shame. They are the delight of my heart. And then number four, tell them my feet are like brass. I'm not just the God that forgives, I have feet like brass. I'm gonna step in, step on their circumstances, wake them up and make it really uncomfortable and difficult to stay in their sin. He will hinder, he'll give you time, but I promise you this, the Jesus with feet like brass, he will step in sooner or later and stop what you're doing. He has feet like brass. He has a mouth like sword, eyes like fire, face like the sun. He's superior to everything, and he's totally committed to you, and he's coming after you on his terms. That's the Jesus we need to know.